Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss 12 gentlemanly skills that every man can practice from home. What are your forced to stay at home? You might get bored very easily, but rather than spending all of your day on the couch, you can do something that feels a lot more productive and satisfying, which is practicing your gentlemanly skills. Many of these activities cost very little, or you can do them with things that you already have around your home, or they simply take some time and energy to learn. So without further ado, the first thing you can do from home is learn to appreciate whiskey. Not every man drinks, and some men don't like whiskey, but just like other drinks, it's an acquired taste. Ordering a dram of whiskey at the bar is usually rather expensive for what you get, and so when you have time at home, it can be a fun endeavor to test different flavors, and it'll cost you a whole lot less. Doing it from home in a controlled environment is great because it prevents any outside influences and you can fully focus on it, read up about them before, and just determine what you like and dislike about whiskeys. Rather than buying full bottles, you can buy smaller sample sizes, and there are online services out there now that ship them right to your home. Often they're even curated, so you can just pick different sets and just taste along. Before you invest a single dollar, though, you can go to our website and check out our whiskey primers, our 101s. We show you how to taste whiskeys, what glasses you should use, the different areas of scotch, for example. So you get the theory first, and then you can start in practice. Number two, learn how to mix your favorite cocktail or just a small repertoire of cocktails so you can easily entertain and impress your guests when you have them over. After all, you can also just enjoy them yourself. When I mean cocktail, I don't mean a screwdriver or a vodka soda, but something more elegant that you would maybe get at a craft cocktail bar. Classics include an Old Fashioned or Manhattan, but maybe you can also experiment with an egg white cocktail, such as a whiskey sour, or something that's a little more elaborate for summer, such as a caipirinha. Of course, we suggest that you learn how to make a cocktail from scratch, and sometimes little things like a simple syrup can be easily done with water and sugar, so you don't need to go out and buy anything. Mixers may be quicker to use, but they're also a lot more expensive, and usually don't taste as good as a freshly handmade cocktail. So if you're new to this, the big question is, where do you start? Well, first of all, you need the right tools, such as a shaker and a strainer. And for a complete list of what you can start with, check out this guide here. I know there are often sets that you can buy, but more often than not, they're overpriced and they don't really perform well. So the list we put together is all tested, it works really well, and it's relatively affordable. Once you've got the tools, it's time to buy some liquor. If you want to have a full stocked bar, though, that can be rather expensive. So instead, when you start, I suggest to just pick three cocktails that you like and want to mix, and then just buy those ingredients that you actually need. So what cocktails do you like? Frankly, I don't know, but you can find some inspiration traditionally in cocktail recipe books, and we have a whole list of them here. Personally, what I dislike about them is when you actually want to mix your cocktail, the page doesn't stay open and it's just a pain moving around back and forth between wet fingers, squeezing your lemon and understanding what the next step is. Because of that, recently, I've really gotten into using an app from a local distillery called Tattersell. It's free for Android and Apple, and this is not sponsored at all, and you don't even have to use their liquor, but it's really helps you choosing a cocktail based on the main liquor, based on the occasion, or the level of difficulty of mixing it. Whenever we have guests over and I mix cocktails, they're always impressed because they're on par with what you would get at the nice craft cocktail bar. If you want to get really fancy, you could even invest in a special ice maker that creates clear ice for you, or a smoking cloche, but frankly, that's sometimes overkill at home and then everything smells like smoke. One more tip though, if you have future guests over, rather than asking them what they want to drink and they're giving you all different answers, so you're ending up having to mix six different cocktails and maybe you don't have the ingredients for them, just say, hey, we're having a whiskey sour. Would you like some? And if they're not up for that, maybe you can say, well, we also have a gin and tonic. That way it keeps it simple. You can mix something quickly. It tastes great. You've practiced, you get the proportions right, and you can then spend time with your guests rather than stressing out about different cocktail recipes. 
The third thing you're going to do is to write thank you notes. A handwritten correspondence in this day and age is very rare, but because of that, once you receive it, it makes you feel all the more important. Just the mere fact of sitting down, thinking about it, taking a pen and writing it down makes you all the more grateful right away. Not only will a handwritten note make the recipient feel appreciated and honored, but it's also a great way to say thank you because success in life is rarely achieved on your own. You don't even need something tangible. Something intangible can be just as good or sometimes even better. Just think of a parent or a mentor and when you write them a note thanking them for what they taught you or their love, they will probably be really touched. Other reasons to write thank you notes could be to call out kind gestures of support that you've received from a friend or a family member, for example. Not only are thank you notes a hallmark of a true gentleman, but they're also a great relationship building and maintenance tool. To learn more about thank you notes and handwritten correspondences, please check out our in-depth guides on our website here. The fourth thing you can do is learn how to write with a fountain pen, especially when you're working on your thank you notes. Why do you need to learn with a fountain pen when there are all sorts of ballpoint pens out there? Well, it is a very unique tool that is old fashioned, but it makes your message feel more intentional, deliberate and valuable. Why? Well, it's a special tool. You have to take an extra step to thank someone, for example, or to write something. And so it makes the recipient feel more special. If you don't know where to start, please check out this video on how to write with a fountain pen, which is made for beginners. And we also put together a list of budget fountain pens under $20, as well as fountain pens between $100 and $300. So you can find something that works for you. The fifth thing you can do is learn how to give good gifts. Gift giving is something that can be practiced and learned. Great gifts show how well you know someone, how well you listen to them, and how much effort you put into them so they feel appreciated. As my wife can surely tell you, the importance of gifts to individuals varies greatly. For example, she loves them and I'm just fine without them. The key to a good gift is to give something that they really want, that they are into, not something that you are into and that you enjoy. Many people like to give gifts that they would like to receive themselves, but it's all about the recipient, not about you. So one easy way to make it more about the recipient is to add their initials to the gift, because that makes it less valuable to everyone else, but much more valuable to that individual. If you never really thought about giving good gifts or if you know that it's not your strong suit, please check out this guide with 10 steps of how to give a great gift. With all that said, if you still think that gift giving is not worth your time, I urge you to read the book Giftology because there's a bunch of benefits of gift givings for you, even though it's all about the recipient. The sixth thing you can do is learn how to cook a signature dish really well. You can practice and perfect something so when the time comes and you have to quickly put a meal together, you can impress others and just create something that is very satisfying and maybe the foundation of a good conversation and of a strong relationship that you're building through a meal. Of course, if you're a good cook, words in the street and people want to come over more often and they will always respect you and cherish the fact that you provide such a great meal for them. Personally, I like to cook, but I don't do it very often. I'm good with meats, with sauces, but my signature dishes are typically German dishes because that's not something that you can easily get here in the US. And so I can do a really good job to provide something that is special for people that they don't get anywhere else. So rather than my Spätzle and Maultaschen skills, I also make a mean tiramisu. Now all of my special dishes have really taken a lot of time to perfect them because sometimes the recipe out of the book is not ideal. I've also come to learn about my signature ingredients such as Worcestershire sauce and fish sauce which always add this nice umami flavor. People always say, mm, your meat tastes so good, the sauce is so great, this tastes so intense but they can't put their finger on it. Now if I sound like I'm bragging, please check out this video about all the things I suck at. Also, if you have a repertoire of signature dishes, you know exactly what to cook when someone's over. So you don't have to try something new because that's just stressful, especially if it goes wrong and you have to do it all over again. So you don't know where to start, just think about your favorite meal, maybe at a restaurant or your mom's recipe and just cook it. 
You don't even need to buy a cookbook these days. There are lots of nice food blogs online that provide recipes and instructions and videos for free. That being said, we enjoy a subscription to America's Test Kitchen because they just test one recipe a hundred times in all the different variations and come up with a one way to cook it so it tastes perfectly. For example, most recently, we tried some oven fries. Sounds awful, right? We all had oven fries that tasted like crap, but this one was just amazing. It incorporated a mix of water and starch and a potato and everything was crisp on the outside, soft on the inside, and we'll definitely do it again. The seventh gentlemanly thing you can learn is how to smoke a cigar. Now, before you get on your high horse, we don't endorse that anyone smokes. And frankly, I'm not a smoker myself. I smoke cigars very rarely. And so it's not something you have to do. But I think trying to smoke a cigar at least once in your life is a nice experience. Just like special liquor or a 64 ounce ribeye, certain vices can sometimes be particularly enjoyable in special moments, such as when you achieve something or the birth of a child, moderation is key. We have a bunch of different cigar guides on our website, which you can check out here, including a video on how to smoke a cigar. By the way, if you have tried cigars and you wanna check out something new, maybe think about pipes. And of course, we have a guide about that here too. Number eight, learn how to tie a necktie or a bow tie without the need of a mirror. Now, as a viewer of the Gentleman's Gazette, we fully expect that you have tied certain neckties and bow ties at home before. And most of the time, we have a mirror because it makes things easier. But if you practice tying a tie or a bow tie in different knots, and you can do it blindly or without looking at the mirror, your knots will not only become better looking, but you'll also be quicker and you can help out anyone at any point in time, even though it's mirrored then because you look at them rather than at yourself. If you're just starting out, we have a video about the three easiest tie knots. We also have different individual videos for tie knots that I usually use. And we have two videos on how to tie a bow tie, one for beginners and one that creates a more advanced and unique look. So by practicing enough, you'll be able to do it blindly without a mirror, and you can still do it with a mirror, but you'll always be quicker and it'll look better. The ninth gentlemanly skill you can learn at home is either to learn how to grow a beard at home, because it's easy now and you can see what it looks like, or you can learn how to shave properly with a DE razor, which not only provides a superior shave, but it's also a lot less expensive. If you want to learn more about how to grow a beard from scratch, we have a bunch of resources on our website, including a PDF and a bunch of videos, so you can check them out here. Now, even if you're not into beards, you might think, well, while I shave while I'm at home, no one is going to see my smooth results anyways. But it's like with many things in life, practice leads to perfection. And now that you have the time, it's just a good time to start. Shaving with a DE razor and a sharp blade is not something you want to practice before you have to get into work in 20 minutes on a Tuesday. So why should you skip your cartridge system? Well, not only will you get a much better and smoother result, but if you do it properly, you can do it in about the same time. It is also a lot less expensive in the long run because you don't have to buy expensive cartridges and using a DE razor can help to prevent razor burns and ingrown hairs. If you're new to this, check out my video about the nine most common shaving mistakes men make, as well as our guide on how to shave with a DE razor. You can even get our 200 plus page shaving guide where we tested over 150 different products and show you everything step by step along with some videos by becoming a patron of the Gentleman's Gazette. To learn more about the perks you get as a patron, please check out our Patreon page here. The 10th gentlemanly thing you can do is to cultivate a hobby. For me, classic men's clothing was a hobby that then turned into a business and a career. And I still like to spend time on it, which means I like to read about it or watch something or just learn about it in general. For example, just recently, I read a book about bespoke shoes by Bernhard Reutzel. And if you're interested in classic men's style, and I assume you are because you're here, then here's a list of 10 books I urge you to read. And if you want to even have more books, here's a list with 100 books. And if you're curious about other hobbies, here's a list of 100 hobbies specifically for gentlemen. The 11th thing you can do is to learn how to become a better listener. Being a good listener is always a valuable skill, but it becomes even more important when you're under pressure because it creates a win-win situation. Why is that? Well, if others feel appreciated and feel like they're heard, they're much more likely of respecting what you are saying. 
I get it listening and letting the other person finish is hard sometimes. In my family, we often talk over each other, but that means it's always more important to you to bring your point across and you're just waiting for the next pause so you can bring your counter argument, but that means you're not even listening and comprehending what the other person is saying. Culturally, it's of course very different across the world. That being said, being able to listen to others is a skill you need in any human to human relationship and it will just be beneficial for you the better you can do it. As a gentleman, it reflects your respect to the other person and their contribution and that you deem it as valuable as your own. In today's world, it's so easy to be distracted and to just look at your phone or do other things and multitask, but in reality, it's not something we can truly do. And if you listen while you're doing something else, you're not truly listening. So always force yourself to look the other person into the eye because it shows that you're paying attention and then try to paraphrase what they say or ask smart questions that make sense based on what they just said. By giving someone your undivided attention, you make them feel heard and understood. And at the end of the day, we all want to experience that. Last but not least, the 12th gentlemanly skill you can learn is how to argue properly. If you're in close quarters with your coworkers or your family, chances are an argument will arise sooner or later. How a person argues strikes right at the heart of your character and it's the moment where people actually take their gloves off. Are you a good listener? Do you become defensive? Are you very aggressive? What is your style? Are you open to new ideas or ideas not from you or are you just focusing on your point of view? No one likes to be perceived as incompetent or wrong, but the way you handle an argument is how it shows who you really are. Because of that, a two-sided debate and conversation is very important. And that means that opinions are never sacred and that you also have to accept to be wrong sometimes and let the other person show you certain facts and you have to be man enough or gentleman enough to recognize that and say, yes, you're right, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Along those lines, trying to win should never be the goal, rather maybe focus on the truth and the other person and keep in mind that they wanna be heard and understood. A general unwillingness to learn or to consider other people's viewpoint doesn't make you more of a man, it just shows that you're so insecure that you just have to look at your own angle. So what does it specifically mean to argue like a gentleman? Well, first of all, you stay calm and you don't yell. You stick to the facts and don't use insults or refer to old things that are in the past and are closed now. Frankly, we created a whole video about how to argue like a gentleman and you can check it out here. If you enjoyed this video, you may also want to watch the one on how to improve your wardrobe and how to maintain your investment. In today's video, I'm wearing a very casual at home outfit, which consists of an old shirt that is very comfortable and it shows some signs of wear on the collar and the cuffs, but I still like it a lot. And so at home or when I cook, it's a great piece to wear because I don't have to be afraid that I get it stained. It's a nice thick twill with a light blue and darker blue stripe. I'm combining it with a simple pair of chinos and cotton, which is comfortable to wear, but also easy to wash. After all, I have a two and a half year old daughter and so at home, my clothes get more dirty now than they used to. On my feet, I have a pair of casual chocolate brown woven leather penny loafers, and I'm combining them with a matching belt from our Ford Belvedere belt system in chocolate brown with a silver Neville buckle that works well with my silver pinky ring, and it's all tied together with a blue star sapphire stone. Of course, my socks, are over the calf socks from Fort Belvedere and they have the same color scheme of a light blue and dark blue. So everything looks harmonious, even though I'm at home.